Hello everyone! Today I'm taking you on a tour of my pantry, fridge, and freezer. I'm a working class person in the US, and as such, I have just enough money to pay our basic living expenses, but not much extra. I work at home, and therefore I cook almost all the food my husband and I eat. We live in a cheap apartment with a smaller than ideal kitchen, with cabinets of cheap wood that are falling apart. There's not enough room in the kitchen proper to store all our food, so I've extended our kitchen with an old desk and some secondhand shelves. What you're about to see is not a recommendation of how you should organize your kitchen and what kinds of foods you should keep on hand. Everyone is different and has different needs and abilities, but I will say that if you can keep a fair amount of base foods in your pantry and learn to plan meals around those pantry staples, you can potentially save lots of money and cut down on food waste. So let's walk through all the food I currently have in my apartment. So I'm actually going to start my pantry tour in my improvised pantry. <laughs> If you're like me and you live in a small apartment uh, and you're a big cook like I am, little apartment kitchens uh, do not give you enough room to store all of your pantry supplies and your pots and pans and stuff. So I've improvised. I've got a bookcase over there full of stuff and a bookcase over here full of stuff. I'm just going to start here. Uh, this bookcase we actually got in the garbage, not in, in the dumpster, but like next to the dumpster. Sometimes you can get pretty good furniture for free by dumpsters. Uh, don't get anything with upholstery, but something like this that's easy to clean. Piece of cake. So here I have got my two giant bags of premium rice, jasmine and basmati. Uh, premium rice is definitely worth it in my book. It's a lot better than the cheap rice. Uh, and it's also pretty cheap if you buy it in big bags like this. I got this at H Mart, which is an Asian grocery store chain. And I got this from an Indian grocery store. So pretty good deals. And each of these bags will last us both about um, half a year to a year, depending on how many rice dishes we eat. And then the next shelf under that we have uh, rice and beans. This is basically like if you're poor and you want to save money and you want to like eat food that's um, that has a very long shelf life from your pantry, eat beans and rice. <laughs> it's a complete protein. Beans have not only protein but like a lot of vitamins and minerals. They count as a vegetable basically. Uh, so it's a great resource. So I got arborio rice, a big bag of premium uh, calrose rice, black rice that I got at H Mart and some premium uh, medium grain or short grain brown rice. And in addition to legumes on this shelf, I also have just kind of miscellaneous grains uh, that I don't tend to eat that often, but I just keep some of them on hand anyway. Uh, this is couscous, this is quinoa, and this is uh, polenta or grits. They're basically the same thing. Don't at me, Southerners. <laughs> or Italians. And this is popcorn. I got all these at the bulk section, um, including the Arborio rice. Got that all the bulk section in Winco, which is why they're in these little bags. I reuse these bags, by the way. You can totally just reuse them and refill them. And then here's my legume collection. I have two bags of pinto beans. Uh, I think I probably got this second bag because I noticed they were on sale when I was getting other legumes, so I went ahead and just got extra. Pinto beans are the cheapest. They're not my favorite bean by a long shot. Um, I don't even really like beans that much anyway, but um, they're cheap. Uh, chickpeas I do like, um, but they and most beans give me horrible gas, so I can't eat them very often. Uh, red lentils. This is another legume I actually like. I make doll out of this. And then black beans. It's another, like, one of the cheaper legumes. So on my shelf below this, we have our pasta and noodle section. I like to use ramen, um, not necessarily as soup, uh, but I, I like to use the noodles in stir fries. I've got quite a few recipes on this channel uh, where I use ramen noodles. I'll link some recipes below in the video description, by the way. Um, I used I have, like, a playlist also called Pantry Delights, where I cook a lot of things using primarily pantry staples like this. Uh, this is orzo. I actually have plans for this uh, next week. I'm going to make a Greek uh, lamb and orzo stew. This year we're cooking a bunch of Greek food. Uh, it's one of those cuisines where we haven't had much of it, but what we have had we really liked, so we wanted to explore it more, so we got a cookbook. I'll show you, actually. This is where I keep my cookbooks. I don't have very many because I improvise most of my recipes, and the joy of cooking is also my main resource. Uh, this is a cookbook we got. I do not actually recommend that you buy it because um, it, it needs some editing. It's like, it's got typos and grammar errors on a lot of the pages, and like, the recipe for a custard pie uh, doesn't say what temperature you're supposed to bake at it at, which I think is a horrible mistake. And then the rice pudding recipe um, miss, is missing three of the ingredients from the ingredients list. So like, I do not recommend that you buy this book. It's got lovely photographs, and if you're an intermediate to advanced level home cook, you can kind of fill in the gaps with your own knowledge and the internet. But yeah, otherwise I don't recommend you buy that. Anyway, back to the pasta shelf. So yeah, orzo. 
They're just Annie's mac and cheese. My husband likes these. Uh, and then for pasta, I tend to always keep some egg noodles. I tend to keep uh, short pasta. I've got some shells and some rotini, I think. No, not rotini, rigatoni. I tend to keep short pasta on hand to make pasta salads and some other pasta dishes. And then I always keep some spaghetti on hand, usually thin spaghetti just because it cooks faster. And then our fruit bowl, I've got some tangerines. This time of year, there's really not very much uh, seasonal fresh fruit. In the summer, this would be much fuller, but for now we've got some tangerines and cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes, technically. I like to keep them out as long as I can and not put them in the fridge because they kind of lose their integrity. All right, now we are at bookshelf number two, and from this top shelf, it looks like we're, we're booze hounds, but really we're not. <laughs> um, my husband, like, maybe mixes himself a drink once or twice a year, and I don't drink. Um, but I do like using alcohol in um, recipes, uh, mostly in baking. So we've got some rum, creme de cacao, this is good in chocolate chip cookies, by the way, Kahlua, um, triple sec, Bailey's, and Kirsch, that's a cherry liqueur. And then behind that, we've got a bunch of Tarani fruit flavored, mostly syrups. I like to make Italian sodas out of those. We have so many because um, I could get free shipping if I bought like $60 worth of the stuff. So I bought like, $60 worth of this stuff so I could get free shipping. And uh, basically we've got like a lifetime supply of Tarani syrup, which is fine, it doesn't really go bad. The next shelf is my tea and hot beverage shelf, although mostly tea. Really the hot beverage is this apple cider uh, for my husband. I do not like instant apple cider, but he does, so I keep it for him. Um, I could go on forever about all of the different kinds of teas I have, uh, but I don't want this video to be that long. <laughs> So I'll just briefly go over what I've got. Here I have some uh, tea bagged Yorkshire tea. This is like for my first cup of tea in the morning that doesn't have to taste as good. I mean, Yorkshire tea tastes good, don't get me wrong. Uh, I actually have a video recently of me taste testing it that nobody watched, so you should go watch that if you want to know more about Yorkshire tea. But yeah, because it's tea bags, it's a lot easier to prepare, and when it's the first thing in the morning and I'm stumbling around, um, it's the easiest kind of tea to make. This is uh, decaffeinated black tea. It's far inferior to uh, caffeinated black tea in flavor, but like sometimes I, I just want to have some tea in the evening or in the late afternoon, and I can't really have caffeine after two in the afternoon, otherwise I can't sleep, so. Um, these are my own blends of teas. This is an orange spice tea, this is chai, and this is a coconut pecan um, cacao nib blend. These are, these are like canisters from other teas that I bought at other points, but I've recycled them. Fill them with my own blends. This is a basket uh, in the darkness. This is, this is a basket of uh, teas that taste good without cream and sugar. If I had my way, um, if I didn't have to deal with the consequences, I would drink like five cups of black tea with cream and sugar every day because I love it so much. Um, but I've been trying to curb my empty calorie consumption, so I've been drinking more of these that, you know, this is like green. This is actually a good one, green tea with lemon. Uh, I like that because you don't have to add cream and sugar to make it taste good. This is my selection of herbal teas. I don't really like herbal tea very much, so I don't have very many. And then I've got some like Asian teas. I've got Genmai Cha and Mugi Cha and Hoji Cha. Uh, if you know what those are, you know what those are. <laughs> there are various, uh, and oolong tea too sometimes. Uh, this is my everyday favorite loose leaf black tea. Like I get this at the Indian grocery store whenever they have uh, it at all. I just like stock up on it because it's so good. It's an Assam blend and yeah, it, it, it's just great. <laughs> it's an amazing tea. It's so smooth. You can overbrew it too and it still tastes good. And then Thai iced tea. We don't drink so much of this in the winter. My next shelf down is like my baking grains shelf. Uh, I try to keep everything in these nice Tupperware containers. Every time I go to a thrift store, I look for more containers like this because I want to have all of my grains and my legumes like stored in containers like this. But anyway, I've got flour and sugar, and this is more sugar. I don't like ever running out of things, uh, so I tend to stock up on them in advance, especially if I see they're on sale. Uh, and then this, it says rice, but it's not rice. It's actually, it's actually whole wheat flour. <laughs> And this says oats, but it's not oats, brown sugar. I think this is a neurodivergent thing, like having things mislabeled and not really caring. Um, this is this says semolina, and it actually is semolina. I used to actually make pasta with semolina flour, though it's better to make it with uh, all-purpose flour 
Uh, semolina flour, though, I've recently discovered is great for making a porridge. I have a recipe for that on this channel that's actually pretty popular, surprisingly. Um, it's not a very good video, I don't think, but hey, what do I know? Um, but it's also good, I've recently discovered, in desserts. There was a recipe in that Greek cookbook that had a uh, custard pie, and it used semolina. It's delicious. And this is instant mashed potatoes. I never use it to make mashed potatoes. I use it in making bread. And then my next shelf down, we have more baking uh, grains and such. Got some quick oats. I actually prefer quick oats to rolled oats because um, usually the way I use these, I use them to make things like bread and cake and cookies and stuff, and it's actually better that they be cut up into smaller pieces. Got an almost empty bag of cornmeal. Gonna need to restock that soon. A mostly full bag of masa for making corn tortillas. Oh, and I have my tortilla press here. I don't really have a better place to keep it, so I just kind of keep it on this shelf. But you use that to make corn tortillas. And then I got bread flour for making bread. And then this is a whole giant canister of Ghirardelli dark uh, cocoa powder. This is really good cocoa powder, by the way. I have another one of these in a different pantry that's almost empty. So this is kind of on standby. And then I discovered when I did my veganuary that soy milk is actually a really good dairy milk substitute. So I keep soy milk in my pantry now. And these are just, um, well, this is like a root beer mug. And these are just kind of empty tea canisters that I might have a use for later. If you're poor like I am, you're, you're used to saving things in case you might need them later. I'm saving this Starbucks cup in case I need it as a prop in a video later. <laughs> That's really the only reason I'm saving it. And then at the bottom of this water-damaged uh, bookcase, this was free too, by the way. I don't really care that it's damaged. I mean, this is utility. It's not uh, meant to be pretty. Um, I have basically uh, some mustard on standby. I have some in the fridge already that's open, but I don't like to ever run out of stuff, so I keep the spares in here. Uh, tuna for my husband. I hate canned tuna, but he likes it, so I keep it. Uh, black olives. And um, three evaporated milks. I mentioned earlier uh, for my tea habit, uh, I, if I had my way, if I didn't have to worry about consequences, I would have it with cream and sugar like several times a day, but that's not good for me. So my first cup of tea in the morning, I have to have some dairy in it, otherwise I get an upset stomach. So I use evaporated milk, which is not sweetened. It's just the natural milk sugars. Uh, it, it's a really nice uh, cream substitute. Like if you're trying to um, kick a habit of having like a lot of cream or half and half or whatever in your tea and coffee, try just plain evaporated milk. Uh, and then these are some um, jams and a green salsa. This is a green salsa that one of our friends made and canned. Um, I'll probably be eating, uh, we'll, we'll both be eating these like the next, uh, the next week actually, because I'm going to make some bread rolls. Tomato paste, it's great in all kinds of recipes. And then canned tomatoes, I always keep canned tomatoes. Uh, at any given time between these and red wine in my fridge and some spices and the spaghetti, I can always make spaghetti with sauce like at a drop of a hat whenever I want to. And then this is a can of, a giant can of pineapple. I got it for free. Somebody was moving out of the apartment complex and they left a box just full of free food. And so I took it. Um, I'm gonna turn it into juice later at some point. And then a big jar of pickles. It's a lot cheaper if you buy it in a big jar like this, so I did. And then over here, I've got just a bunch of overflow um, empty jars and stuff uh, that I'm saving to put um, homemade jams and hot sauces in and stuff. Right now I have a lot of empty jars because I've almost finished eating through all of the homemade jams uh, that I made last summer. But these are on standby. <laughs> I almost forgot about this spice rack full of cake decorating supplies because I like hardly ever use it anymore. I went through a cake decorating phase or a cake making phase in general and I just got tired of it. So I still have all these decorating supplies. They don't go bad, so I'm keeping them uh, for when I eventually get back into cake decorating, but they're there. <laughs> and then I've got one, two more spice racks, but that's not even a fraction of all of my spices. Um, so, you know, I've got some overflow spices here and spices that, um, you know, won't fit in my bigger containers below, uh, just because I have so many different kinds of spices but not enough containers for them all. And then I've got, uh, Glandex for one of our kitties has problems with her anal glands. <laughs> oh yeah, right back to the whole improvised pantry area. I've got lots and lots of, uh, cans of cat food. Uh, at any given time, I try to keep at least a month's worth of, um, cat supplies for our babies in case we can't leave or it, there's a shortage or something. And then this other spice rack, more overflow spices. Actually, a lot of these are empty bottles that I'm just kind of saving. I might need them later, I might not. This is some lavender that I actually grew and dried, but I haven't been using it. It's just kind of sitting there. And then garlic, I keep that out on the counter. 
And now th this is like the bulk of my actual spices. I have a video where I like take you on a tour of all of the different spices I have. So watch that if you want to know what all of these spices are. It's a big container of salt. I should get one of those like wooden boxes that closes. Uh, but yeah, I've recently discovered I like just having it like this to salt things. It's a lot easier than bothering with a shaker. But then this is sugar. And my husband is always like, they look quite similar. Are you sure you want them looking so similar? And indeed, once I, I did make the mistake of putting like a spoonful of salt into my tea instead of sugar. This is cinnamon sugar. I made snickerdoodles a week or so ago, and this is just the leftover cinnamon sugar. I'll put it in cocoa at some point. And then these are cat treats. We call them chickums. They're basically just uh, bits of chicken skin rendered down. They're kind of like dehydrated. Let's see if Miney wants one. Miney! <laughs> Good girl. She loves them so much. <laughs> I usually make her jump through a hoop to get them, but like I'm holding a camera right now, so I can't do that. Oh yeah, and I don't know why it took me so long to get into this, but I have olive oil in a squeeze bottle right next to the stove now. It's so convenient. I, I recommend that. Speaking of olive oil, so up above the stove is where I keep all of my like oils and vinegars, hot sauce. Uh, there's some miscellaneous stuff up here too, like there's um, there's like mineral oil as well as my uh, sharpening stone for my knife. <laughs> so I went ahead and took everything out of the pantry so I could show you guys better what exactly I have. It's so high up. Uh, so I'll start here with something controversial. This is leftover deep fry oil. I only use this oil to fry donuts and it takes like four minutes total to fry donuts. So the oil left over is actually pretty clean. I strained it and I'm gonna use it again to deep fry something else. And then this is my non leftover vegetable oil. At this point, I pretty much only use vegetable oil for deep frying. Um, anytime I do any other kind of sauteing, I either use olive oil or I use rendered animal fat. Miney, <laughs> do you want more chickens? Good girl, Miney. <laughs> Fine, run away. <laughs> Don't let me love you. Let's just keep on with the oil theme. So this is my like low quality cooking olive oil. It's like, you know, it's extra virgin olive oil, but it's like not a very good brand. Um, so I use this for cooking. This is my ghee. We do a lot of Indian cooking in this household, so we go through ghee relatively quickly. Oh yeah, I've gotten comments in my last videos where I've done pantry tours of like, oh, like you need to be careful and make sure all those things don't go bad. Like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I monitor how long things have been there for the most part. And actually, like, expiration dates really are suggestions. They're not, like, totally absolute. Uh, they're there so that companies won't get sued, um, <laughs> basically. Um, anyway, uh, red wine vinegar. Um, I got this big one just to replace this one because I'm almost out. I hate running out of things, by the way. I like replacing my things before I run completely out of them. And also sometimes I'll just like buy something that I always keep in my pantry if I happen to see it on sale. I wasn't done with the oil yet. I'm so organized. Okay, here's coconut oil. I actually used to use this a lot more often than I do now, but now I don't use it very much anymore. This is my good olive oil. This is like for raw applications and it's Greek olive oil, again, since we're doing a Greek year. I've already used like half of this bottle. <laughs> Sesame oil, chili oil. I usually have never kept this. If I wanted to put heat into my Asian dishes, I would just add like actual chilies or, or pepper flakes. I didn't want to add any more oil to an already oily dish, but my husband really likes it, so I got it. It's like most of these items are to my liking because I do most of the cooking here, but like, yeah, some of these things are my husband's influence. This is aged sherry vinegar. It's really good, but um, the only reason I got this was uh, because it was in a recipe of the Bob's Burgers Burger Book, and I cooked through that entire book. Watch those videos. I love them very much, and not enough people have watched them. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's good. Um, but yeah, I just haven't been using it much. Kind of forget that I have it. But the good thing about vinegar is it kind of lasts forever. Balsamic vinegar. This is a relic from um, before my husband and I moved in together five years ago. <laughs> we each came into the into the marriage with, uh, well, he had two bottles of balsamic vinegar and I had one. Now this is, we're, we're finally down to like our last bottle of balsamic vinegar. Um, this is some apple cider vinegar. I've recently learned that it really is worth it to buy the good stuff with vinegar. Even if you buy the expensive stuff, it's still quite cheap considering um, considering that it takes forever to go through one of these. I guess we're doing vinegars now. So here's rice vinegar. Well, that was the rest of my vinegars. Here's some meeting. I'm almost out of it, but I don't use meeting that often. So 
I don't feel like I need to restock it just yet. It is a Japanese cooking wine. It's really good. I just don't make Japanese food that often. Uh, but I do make Mexican food and Mexican-like food often, so we have a giant bottle of Tapatio. And we also have a smaller bottle of Tapatio. Uh, this is like for us to use, like to dab, to apply to our food. The bigger bottle is just to refill it because it's cheaper that way. And I guess we might as well look at the rest of our hot sauces. <laughs> This was a gift to my husband from somebody and it's not very good because it uses habanero and it's out of focus anyway, so who cares? Uh, this is the last dab from Hot Ones. It is indeed very, very, very hot and spicy. Uh, it, ta it tastes really good too, it's just extremely hot. Tabasco, which is actually really overrated. I think my husband just happened to have this from before. And then this is some other out of focus. Come on, focus! Why will nothing focus? Focus. Focus. There you are. Uh, stronger than death. Hot sauce. I haven't had this in a long time. I don't know if it's any good. And then it took me a long time to get on board with Worcestershire sauce, but it is actually really good stuff. Again, I got this because it was in a recipe in the Bob's Burgers Burger book. And this is rose water. I highly recommend you get this. It like If for nothing else, it makes an excellent perfume. Uh, but yeah, you use it. And it takes a long time to go through one of these bottles. Like, I'm only halfway through and I've had this bottle for a few years now. Uh, yeah, it's really good. A little goes a long way. I missed this part of our pantry earlier. <laughs> we have a fizz canister for my soda stream because I love fizzy water. Just plain fizzy water. I drink it every day. Uh, some Cokes for my husband's Coke habit. And then some juices because I'm trying to ease him out of his Coke habit. And... Sugar water with a little bit of trace vitamins is a little bit better than soda. And then a water filter, which is in desperate need of refilling. And now we have uh, this cupboard. So on the higher shelf, I've moved everything down here so you can see it better. This is basically just like my, my miscellaneous Asian ingredients pantry. And I don't use this stuff very often, which is why I put it way up here. I've got nori, some wakame, I think that's kelp in English. Uh, it's seaweed. You put it in, I pretty much only put this in miso soup. Sesame seeds and panko breadcrumbs. And then this shelf right here is just like a bunch of overflow spices that don't fit in my spice jars, as well as like my nutmeg and the rasp I use exclusively to grate the nutmeg, and then a mortar and pestle, and some rose petals just sitting in there, chillin'. And then this cupboard is my baking supplies on the lower shelf and then like snacking slash baking on the upper shelf. So I don't think I'm going to go through every single individual item here because I don't feel like it. <laughs> uh, but in the front I've got some yogurt raisins and espresso uh, beans uh, and some hot peanuts. These are basically just snacks for my husband. Triscuits. Um, two different kinds of peanut butter because he's a crunchy peanut butter guy and I'm a smooth peanut butter gal. Some more pistachios for my husband, and then some old graham crackers that I'm gonna turn into crust for cheesecake. And then over here, I pretty much have like a lot of dried fruit. Dried mangoes, by the way, are delicious. Yeah, I've got mangoes and dates and pecans, walnuts, peaches, craisins, and then I got things like pepitas, my tahini. This is unsweetened dried shredded coconut. I use this in Indian cooking. Golden raisins are far superior to the non-golden variety. Dried apricots, this is probably my favorite dried fruit to snack on. Dried pineapple, hazelnuts. I always get a big bag of these from our local farmer's market every summer because hazelnuts are local to the Pacific Northwest, so they're cheap and they're delicious. We love them. Uh, this says almonds, but there's cashews in there. I mean, it's obvious that they're cashews. Peanuts. And then these are chia seeds. I guess I just didn't really know where else to put these. I got these for uh, videos in the past where I made like chia pudding and um, other vegan things. So yeah, I don't use chia seeds that often. I have to like make a plan to use them. And then this is my baking shelf. So I have things like honey and sweetened flake coconut and powdered sugar. Oh yeah, this is, um, this is tapioca starch. I use it to make Brazilian cheese bread. Molasses chocolate chips and butterscotch chips, corn syrup. This is more for like candy making. Uh, more chocolate chips, cacao nibs. I'm almost out of them finally. I mostly use these in my um, my own personal tea blends. This is the other, this is the other giant canister of cocoa powder. But yeah, it's, it's only, it only comes up to about here. I'm almost done with it. And then baking soda. I bought this the other day um, and I, 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 Kid you not, uh, Arm & Hammer was almost $4 for a box this size. It was ridiculous 
This was only 99 cents. Baking soda should only be like 99 cents or less if it's in a box this size. Food prices are insane. Oh yeah, by the way, I made a community post, but I know most people don't see community posts, so maybe you don't know. Um, but there's this channel I follow. They're a homesteading channel called uh, Loving Off the Land. And they recently uh, uploaded, I think, a great video about um, ex explaining uh, why food prices are so high right now, especially in my country. Uh, the short answer is corporate greed and monopolies, but it's a nice, short, concise video that explains it well. So like, definitely watch that. I'll put a link in the description to that too. Uh, I have two things of baking powder because this one's almost empty. A giant thing of vanilla, but not giant enough. I need to make a special pilgrimage to Costco to get one of those like really big ones. Because, I mean, I'm going to go through this easily in, like, I don't know, four months. <laughs> so it happens when you bake a lot. Uh, sugar in the raw. I actually got this. Uh, I've, I've gone through phases where I use this in my tea. Like, I somehow think it's better. Uh, it does taste a little bit different. Like, when you make things like lemonade out of it, you can really taste the difference. But I got this to make a sticky toffee pudding a couple months ago, and it was delicious. Cream of tartar. You mix that with baking soda to get um, baking powder, incidentally. Or you use this to stabilize egg whites. Cornstarch, kosher salt, and then these are some extracts. This is a really good hazelnut extract. I got it online. Vanilla bean. Uh, I'm doing a year, um, in addition to doing a year where we're making a bunch of Greek cuisine, we're also making a bunch of puddings and custards this year. So vanilla bean is definitely going to come into play. Almond extract. I hate almond extract, but my husband likes it okay, so I have it. Coconut extract. This is really good. It's weak in flavor, but it's good. And some gelatin and like toothpicks and and cupcake papers for cupcakes that I don't make anymore, and a four candle from when I had my 40th birthday a couple of years ago. Uh, my husband's turning 40 in like a couple weeks, so I'm gonna find the zero and probably put these on his birthday cake. So that was all my pantries. Let's look at my fridge and freezer now. So once a month I try to do a deep clean and clean out the fridge. I did this like a week ago, so sorry if this fridge is not fit for Instagram. <laughs> Normal people have a tiny, tiny bit of filth in their kitchens, and that is okay. This is birch beer as a special treat for my husband. He likes it a lot. Uh, this is canned milk. Uh, basically, I, I open it at either end, and this lasts me for about six to seven days of, of morning teas, unless my husband has tea as well, in which case we go through it faster. This is all the eggs I happen to have at the moment. I buy them in packets of 60, and then I transfer them into these like smaller containers that I've saved, which is why they're so beaten up and stained. <laughs> they're just old containers. I only have 19 eggs right now, and I'm going to use a dozen of them in a few days to make my husband a tiramisu uh, for his birthday. Uh, and I bought the 60 eggs before the prices went up so high, so I'm not looking forward to buying more eggs. Black olives. My husband likes snacking on them, and I was making salads with them. This is, okay, I have to show you this. So this is bacon ends and pieces. Uh, that's how it's sold. It's usually called ends and pieces. And it is so much cheaper to buy bacon like this. So this is like all little tiny pieces. Like it's literally ends and pieces. It's all the leftover bits that didn't turn into pretty slices when they sliced the bacon. And this is perfect if you're just gonna use bacon uh, chopped up in recipes, which I did. Um, I made baked beans and I made greens and both of those use chopped bacon. So I just got ends and pieces. And also you'll find plenty of like intact slices like this. They're like a little ugly and frayed at the edges, but they're perfectly fine. And it's so much cheaper than sliced bacon. So I almost always buy it in ends and pieces. And if I can't eat all this on time, which I probably won't be able to, I freeze some of it. I'll probably freeze some of that soon. And then behind that, we've got Greek yogurt. These are leftover corn muffins I made to go with the beans and the greens. And this is leftover uh, barbecued brisket that I made to go with all those other things. This is lamb leg of lamb that I'm thawing out for two recipes next week. I might put pictures on the screen depending on when I edit and upload this, but I'm gonna be making um, some like lamb skewers with pita and tzatziki, and then I'm also making a lamb and orzo stew. Pretty much can only buy like a lamb frozen in my country, which is a shame, but I mean, it's convenient that way. These are the leftover greens and the leftover beans. I made like eight servings of all of this, so we've just been feeding off the leftovers which is nice because then I don't have to cook as much. Um, here, well, these are hard boiled eggs. There's like three of them for my husband to snack on. And then this shelf, this mid shelf, that's really, really short <laughs> that I've made short on purpose. Um, it's for housing a lot of miscellaneous like um, jams and sauces. And, and these jars are filled with rendered animal fat. I save my drippings after I cook meat. Uh, and then I use those drippings to cook things like potatoes and sauteed vegetables and stuff like that. It adds so much flavor and you save a lot of money that way. Um, but yeah, this is duck fat. 
And this is also duck fat. I know that this mug is always chicken and or duck fat because there's a bird on it. <laughs> That's my system of telling what's in it. This is a pulverized black garlic left over from the Bet It All on Black Garlic Burger from Bob's Burgers. I still have it. <laughs> slowly making my way through it. This is some homemade Rainier strawberry jam with cardamom in it. It's delicious. This, I'm not going to open it because I don't feel like it, but this is a better butter. It's a mixture of vegetable oil and butter, so it's spreadable. And then this way in the back, this is a reduced pear syrup with vanilla bean and a little lemon from when I made poached pears last fall. I basically reduce this and save it for the spring because I like having it with fresh yogurt and um, berries. It's delicious. So I'm going to start eating that soon. Like it keeps for a very, very long time so it won't go bad. This is homemade blackberry jam that I just took out of the freezer. I'm gonna be using that soon when I make those potato rolls. And this is homemade pineapple um, green pepper hot sauce. And this is my dashi iri miso. That means, ah, focus. Focus, there it is, dashi iri, that's what it says. Um, it, it has dashi in it, the, the Japanese broth in it. So it's really easy to make miso soup with it. You just put it in hot water and boom, you have miso soup. I'm letting all the cold air out of my fridge, yay. Uh, this is, <laughs> let's look at this first. This is two cups of goose grease. I roasted, um, I roasted a goose for Christmas last year. It was delicious. Uh, and gooses have so much fat in them. Um, so I saved the fat and I've been slowly using it, mostly to cook potatoes. It's amazing with potatoes. Uh, and then mostly in the bottom, we have like a lot of tall condiments and drinks and baking soda to keep it all fresh. But yeah, I've got my soda stream. I drink about a liter of fizzy water, just plain fizzy water every single day. I love it. And then I like to stock up on creams because they're cheap at Winco and I'm going to be using a lot of cream this month. Um, I'm going to make my husband, I'm going to have two birthday celebrations for him. One just us and another one with some friends. The one that's just us, we're having tiramisu and the one with his friends, we're having a Swedish princess cake but with Indian flavors because I'm doing an Indian feast. Um, and both of those recipes use a lot of cream. So I stocked up. I've got like, well, this one's almost empty. So I've got like a half gallon of cream in here. This is buttermilk. I use some of it to make the cornbread. I'm gonna use more of it to make some bread rolls and some donuts and some other things. Buttermilk is amazing for baking. It's definitely worth getting. Uh, two half gallons of milk. I like to buy them by the half gallons so they don't go bad as quickly. As long as you don't break the seal, it lasts a very long time in the fridge. In the US anyway, I know it's different in other countries. People from other countries are like, what, you keep milk in your fridge for two months? <laughs> it's like, yep, if you don't break the seal and the sell by date is two months in advance, you can totally do that. Um, this is some juice. Again, trying to break my husband a little of his Coke habit. Here's Coke. <laughs> big, big, big jar of pickles that's almost empty. There's like half a pickle sitting in the bottom of this. Some maple syrup in the back. I learned the hard way a few years ago that maple syrup goes bad if you don't put it in the fridge. I used to just drink it quickly enough, uh, use it quickly enough that it would not go bad if I kept it in the pantry. But uh, yeah, it goes bad if you don't keep it in the fridge. So keep it in the fridge. And then um, some ginger beers for my husband, a Martinelli's. I think we were going to have this on Valentine's Day, but he wasn't feeling well on Valentine's Day. So like, I still have it. Maybe we'll have it uh, to celebrate. Uh, I'm gonna have a couple weeks off of work like now. So maybe we'll celebrate that. And then some wines, red wine and white wine. Um, I keep wine in the fridge up to a year after the seal's been broken and it's fine. Uh, it doesn't go bad. And then fish sauce and vegan oyster sauce because my husband's allergic to shellfish. And then the very bottom, I take out those, I take out the crisper drawers that are supposed to go there and I just stash them up here like really super high. Um, I don't know, I think they just get in the way and because of the way the fridge is angled, I can't pull them out all the way. And yeah, they just take up too much space. So I took them out. So I've got a bunch of broccoli. My husband really loves broccoli. I like it too. And it's like one of the most nutritious vegetables. Um, if you want to be healthy, just eat a bunch of broccoli. Uh, so we do. A cucumber, I'm gonna make tzatziki with it later. Some potatoes, I always like to keep potatoes on hand. This bottom shelf has a lot of stuff that I just like to keep on hand, like onions, red onion, carrots. I always have carrots. I also always have celery. And then I have plans for these sweet peppers, but like I often find myself with extra sweet peppers, but it's not a bad thing to have because they're very hearty. They last a long time in the fridge and you can use them in all kinds of recipes and eat them raw, so. And the lower part of the door is where I keep all of our condiments, things like ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, gherkins, uh, teriyaki sauce. I make all of my own sauces from scratch mostly, so I don't bother with bottled sauces uh, like like this, like Asian bottled sauces like that. Uh, but yeah, that's from his days. Sriracha. 
uh, peppers, etc. And then this part of the door is where like I keep a lot of bits of things uh, that I'm in the process of eating. And that's my cat meowing in the distance. But yeah, things like um, Parmesan cheese. This mascarpone is for his tiramisu I'm gonna make in a few days. We've got some tamarind and some yeast for baking. <laughs> oh yeah, and I had to get this Gruyere just because it was so cheap at the butcher. 99 cents for this, like usually this would cost like five bucks at the grocery store. Big old block of cheddar. Again, as long as you don't break the seal, like it's, it's good until July. So it's always good to have one of these on hand. At some point I'm gonna need cheddar. This is some Beecher's cheese, pride of Seattle and New York, I think. Some feta I'm gonna use next week. Some pine nuts I got from the bulk section at Winco because it's much cheaper. And then like bits of things like half an onion, jalapeno, uh, lemons and limes, part of a cucumber, <laughs> and a bit of manchego. This was also really cheap at the butcher. It was like, a sixth of the price of what it would be at the grocery store. And then butter. This is the end of a pound of butter that I got. Miney, quiet. This is the end of a pound of butter that I got at the butcher. It was $2.14 for a pound, which is like half the price of what cheap butter is at the grocery store. So I had to get it and it was good. And now for the freezer, I have a lot of Daisy cottage cheese and yogurt. <laughs> if you know me, you know that this is not cottage cheese and yogurt, that it is um, mostly chicken broth and um, things with which to make chicken broth. So anytime I'm cooking and I'm using, I'm cutting up onions or celery or carrots, I put all the trimmings in here into the freezer. And then when I have enough of them, as well as chicken bones and stuff like that, I make broth. I also have a um, frozen, couple frozen enchiladas that I made a long time ago. <laughs> Not a long time ago, I made them right after Thanksgiving, but yeah, we, sh we should eat these up in the next couple weeks. This is like some of my brisket uh, raw. I trimmed it off before I cooked it because it was too big. I'm going to use this to make burgers. Um, I'm going to blend it with some other meat and make burgers in the future. This is some salt pork. Um, I usually get this instead of pancetta just because it's easier to find than pancetta, but I use this for pasta sauces. Tomato paste. Uh, tomato paste always comes in containers that are way too big for whatever recipe you're cooking, so I inevitably freeze some of it and then just take bits out of the freezer as needed. This is chicken broth, homemade. That's some fat back from pork. I need to melt that down and use it because I don't really have any other use for it at the moment. And then this is phyllo dough. Again, I'm making a lot of Greek food this, uh, this year, so always nice to have phyllo in the freezer. This is braising liquid leftover from when I made tacos El Pastor. <laughs> so I save the liquid, the marinade, and I use that to make chili. It makes, it makes really good chili. These are some Kaiser rolls. I usually use these for burger buns. It's nice to have them in the freezer. And yeah, just take them out of the freezer and like toast them and they're practically like new. Uh, we like to keep premium chocolate in this house as well as Reese's. <laughs> we, we're, we are a married couple of fine tastes. Um, if you can happen to find this uh, ruby chocolate with passion fruit bar, I highly recommend it. It is so, so good. I got it at Cost Plus. I haven't seen it anywhere else, but it, it's just so good. And then these are like some local like Seattle Pride, you know, Rainier Cherry chocolate and uh, dark chocolate. And then Calabrian chilies. Um, I didn't know how long they'd last in the fridge and I didn't have plans for them, so I just froze them for later. Same with this Better Than Bouillon uh, veggie stock. Didn't know how long it would last in the fridge, so I'm keeping it in here just in case. And then I got one serving of pasta sauce for later, some tomato juice <laughs> for later, another leg of lamb for later. I'm making lamb vindaloo for my husband's birthday later this month. And then these are chicken skins. I thaw them out uh, one at a time and fry them up to turn into chickens for Miney, my cat. <laughs> this is super, super hot wings that I made with um, homemade Reaper hot sauce. They're delicious and extremely painful, um, but my husband was sick when I made them last time, so I froze his. <laughs> Hopefully, like, we'll remember and he'll eat them at some point. Uh, and then this is homemade hot sauce, mild hot sauce. This is a strawberry um, red jalapeno hot sauce. So these are both they. I made this, like, for the first time. I improvised it uh, a couple of years ago, and it was so good. Um, that I decided I'd make a lot more last summer, and I made a lot more, and I saved the recipe. Um, my patrons have it actually on Patreon, uh, but we haven't been eating as much of it this time, so need to make a plan to eat more of that. It's delicious, we just haven't been eating that kind of food. 
Okay, before I let all the cold out of the freezer, show the final things. I've got butter. I always keep lots of butter in the freezer. It freezes well and you never want to run out of butter if you're a baker. Uh, frozen corn. <laughs> if, if you come from South Asia, you, you might recognize this as methy. I used to keep it, or fenugreek leaves, I used to keep it on the countertop, but um, it's humid where I live, so it, it got moldy, so I keep it in the freezer now so it doesn't go bad. Frozen peas, frozen mixed veggies, and ice, and that's it. 